Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History and several other history books. Taking you back to the reign of King Edward VI today, a king who never uh, actually reigned by himself, he never reached his majority. On this day in Tudor history, the 13th of October 1549, King Edward VI's council abolished the protectorate of the king's uncle, Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset, and his membership of the royal council. Now, Somerset had made himself Lord Protector in February 1547, shortly after King Henry VIII's death, with the agreement of 13 out of the 16 executors of the late King's will, men who were supposed to form a Regency Council of Equals to help the new nine-year-old King rule. Somerset then went on to rule by proclamation, making all of the decisions himself. And the bells are ringing out for him there. However, the King's Council eventually turned against Somerset, blaming him for the widespread social unrest in England, namely the Prayer Book Rebellion and Ketz Rebellion. On the 5th of October 1549, due to the mounting tensions between Somerset and John Dudley, Earl of Warwick, who'd recently defeated Ketz Rebellion in Norfolk and who is now known to be negotiating with Henry Fitzalan, Earl of Arundel, and Thomas Risley, Earl of Southampton, Somerset issued a proclamation. This proclamation was for a general array of troops to gather at Hampton Court Palace for the defence of the realm, or rather, the defence of the Lord Protector and his nephew Edward VI. According to the Imperial Ambassador Francois van der Delft, the result was that over 4,000 peasants immediately assembled at court, where the Protector was without any members of the council except the Archbishop of Canterbury, Controller Paget, and Dr Smith, one of the secretaries. Van der Delft went on to state that on the same day, the Earls of Warwick and Southampton, the great master of the household, the Earl of Arundel, Mr Baker, Mr North, the first secretary, Dr Peter, other councillors, the Marquis of Northampton and several more lords, all assembled in London and summoned the Lord Mayor and all the city authorities, all of whom at once came to an agreement, seized the Tower of London and put a garrison of their men into it. So you've got Somerset wanting people to gather at Hampton Court Palace, and you've got John Dudley and his supporters uh, all gathering at the Tower of London. The next day, Somerset took the king to Windsor Castle. Van der Delft recorded that Somerset persisted in his wickedness and called in the peasants to oppress the nobility and make himself master and tyrant of all. The lords of the council were forced to act decisively against the protector now, as he'd called on the English people to rise and defend the crown against those he saw as trying to depose him, members of the king's own council. On the 8th of October 1549, Somerset was proclaimed a traitor by the King's Privy Council, and on the 10th of October 1549, he was ordered from the King's presence. He surrendered and was arrested on the 11th of October and brought in front of King Edward VI, who summarised his charges as ambition, vainglory, entering into rash wars in my youth, negligent looking on New Haven enriching himself of my treasure, following his own opinion, and doing all by his own authority, etc. On the 13th of October, his protectorate was dissolved, and on the 14th of October, Somerset was taken to the Tower of London. He confessed to the charges laid against him, and on the 14th of January 1550, his protectorate was taken off him officially by an Act of Parliament. Now, Somerset was released from the Tower on the 6th of February, 1550, and pardoned on the 8th. He became a member of the King's Council once more on the 10th of April, 1550, and on the 14th of May, he was restored as a gentleman of Edward VI's Privy Chamber. So all that was looking rather good for Somerset. 
Unfortunately, this comeback didn't last for very long. In 1551, Somerset was recorded as quarrelling with John Dudley, Earl of Warwick, who'd become Lord President of the Council in February 1550. And it was rumoured that Somerset wanted to regain his former power and position. Following allegations made by Sir Thomas Palmer on the 7th of October 1551, who said that Somerset was planning to invite Northumberland, that's Dudley, Northampton, the Marquis of Northampton, and others to a banquet, and either to kill them there or set upon them by the way, to secure the Tower of London and to raise London. Somerset was arrested. He was tried for high treason by a jury of his peers on the 1st of December 1551 and was executed on Tower Hill on the 22nd of January 1552. Now you can find out more about Somerset's execution in the video that I did for the 22nd of January where uh, yes, I go into details on his, uh, the, well, his end. Uh, so I'll give you a link to um, watch that video and listen to that talk as well. Thank you for joining me. I will be back with another Tudor history event tomorrow. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all uh, for watching, especially my subscribers. It really does help when people subscribe. It just means that uh, YouTube uh, see that uh, the channel is popular and share it about. And it's always good to share Tudor history, isn't it? Uh, so I just want to thank you for following my work. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.